he, when you do, I'll say it when I talk to Richie about this song, it, it actually, ironically, shows the chemistry that you have. Every partnership has got different roles and dynamics. After 25 years, how has that manifested itself between the way you guys write? There's a... Hmm. <laughs> uh, he hates it when I do this. No, there's, look, there's a deep-seated bond that, that can never be broken. But there's the way that I'm mumbling and looking for a word. That's the way we sort of write. We don't have to finish each other's sentences at this point. It's like, <laughs> that's the way it is in this band. You know, isn't it? <laughs> you know, it's true. It's just the way it is. But there is a, a trust. There's a deep-seated trust, and um, and I'm I'm proud of that. You know, it's bands have different dynamics, like you said. There's there's some that that make a greater name in the media because of the the, the fodder that they give the media. You know, this this singer's crazy. He, you know, he, he makes a record every 14 years. These two brothers fight. This uh, this guy pulls a switchblade on the other one. This one does a lot of drugs. This one, but. What I always thought, even when I was a kid, was write a song. Write a song. Because I want to talk to the guy in 25 years from now. I want to see if he's going to be doing this. Even though I was saying those kind of things in the 80s. I'm lucky to have Richard Simbor as my right hand man. But when you get to Lennon, have to start A, gone as the edge. When did you know that? You my have relationship to. seemingly is more like Bono and the Edge than Paul and John. And, Woo! Uh, from what I can gather, it seemed like there was the stories, and, we, and I can only tell you from reading the stories, but probably the way everybody else does, that you know, Paul would write a song and then John would put his name on it. John would write a song, Paul would put his name on it. It was just that collaborative thing, and then the, sometimes they wrote them together. We sit down together. A collaborative effort is truly a collaborative effort. We both play the chords, we both figure out the words, and both come up with titles. It's just so it seems like the, the U2 relation is, is a little more uh, similar to ours. But it, 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 maybe it's that Irish thing or my Irish envy. <laughs> I have Irish envy. I want to I be Irish when I grow up. But it's interesting, isn't it? Because when we made the film, obviously I was talking to John in isolation. Sales in Italy just went down. <laughs> <laughs> I never interviewed them as a band. We had, we had dinner once at the end of um, the making of the film when we did the portrait session. But I made a, a very conscious effort to isolate them from each other. And in fact, the first time any of them saw what the others had said about each other was when we showed the film for the first time, apart from John Lugan yeah, yeah, yeah. and some of the edits. Um, how, how did that dynamic? Again and again, come back. Were you surprised by anything that came up in the film? Sure. <laughs> you know what? I left all the warts on and all the things in. And the idea is that if you felt that way, then that's what you're going to put out there. I wasn't going to candy coat this, this film. Uh, but there are things about yourself that you don't like when you see yourself on the film. You, you think, I think I can dunk. I think I'm six and five, but I'm not. <laughs> That's all what's, what it's about. It was showing it with all its words. And that's, you should explain that, why uh, this was called In Black and White. It was just going to be the truth to hold you. Black and white, nothing gray. Everything was black and white. And that was the title for the longest time until Phil heard us recording uh, When We Were Beautiful, the track on the new record. And he was the first one to say, wow, that song is magical. Because even Tico and David hadn't heard the track at all. Um, they hadn't heard the song. And so when we were in the studio cutting the basic, uh, and which is in the film, he was the one that said, that song's special, and it's in the film, and he said, we've got to change the title, it's called One Very Beautiful. But the idea is black and white, the truth all Yeah, the original title when I first wrote the document, I mean, that has to have a little bit of background. I had never made a film before I made this film. Um, I've made a whole ton of music videos, but they're three minutes long, not 90. Um, so I was pretty scared of the um, idea of making it. John introduced me to the man who's over there somewhere. John came in from Radical Media. Yeah. Big up. Well, he's my executive producer. Come on, bring it in. I'll have it. Uh, and 
and I said to John, look, the only way I can make this film is if it has some structure, documentary by nature, wandering around with a camera, seeing what happens, and seeing if you can poke your lens around a corner and get some dirt and exploit the truth and all the stuff that we've seen in many of these kind of music documentaries. And I said, I can't do that. All I can do is tell the truth in black and white. And that became the title of the film. When we got to the recording session and I heard When We Were Beautiful, I was like, wow, actually this... A lot of people have questioned why we called the film When We Were Beautiful, but for me it was because what I see in the band and what I see in the film is one thing, which is a naivety and an innocence to stick together no matter what. And um, that's how the film title really, for me, came about. Okay. Okay. <laughs> talk so far about life, the music, elevating real life and all the rest of it. You said in the film you're not going back on tour for a long time. Are you crazy? You're about to go back down again. We're going out. I hope that it's uh, you know, I hope, and I'll share a secret with you, I hope that I don't fall into the trap of slippery going into New Jersey here. Because we're, we ran two big records into each other. Uh, and now we're going to go out and commit to a, the biggest tour we've done in a decade. Uh, and then some. Um, I'm going to be aware of it. If I get that cranky and tired, you guys tell me. Yeah. <laughs> Why did you do that back at Slippery into Jersey? Why did you do that back Well, back then, it was a different time, different uh, story. Back then, Slippery, our third album, propelled us to a place that was, you know, that was our thriller. That was our Life of Virgin. That was our one that was... That was the one that took us from, you know, from being a nice little rock and roll band to boom, you know, suddenly we're on the cover of all these magazines, number one, everything's blah, blah, blah. And if for nothing else, we had that garage band chip on your shoulder that says, let me just prove to you that we can do it again tomorrow. And don't think that this is any kind of one hit wonder, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, right. and so we ran in and did Jersey. I went to Dublin on the first show of the, of the New Jersey tour, it was uh, Halloween night, 1988, uh, and we are doing a press conference, and the um, guy in the audience says, so John, why are you here? And I thought to myself, what a stupid question. And it was as I got older and wiser, I realized that that was probably the wisest question that anyone had ever asked me in that era, because the truth was, had the responsible people around us, managers, agents, record company, family, been uh, more confident in our abilities, they would have said, go home, enjoy it, go to sleep for a year, don't worry about this. Don't be trying to, to prove it, prove it, prove it, prove it. You don't, you don't have anything to prove. It exhausted us, it almost killed us. That was the, you know, the turning point that led us to where we're here today, but that was a dangerous time in a band's career. You know, when real success comes, and now you're just running on that treadmill, and we've all seen a lot of great bands break up at that turning point. 25 years later, have you, have you learned your lesson of that? Yeah, so the difference, like I say, with this tour is, yeah, we are going out. We are going out, but it's, it's how I refer to it. I don't want this to be taken home either, but it's called a gentleman's tour. You know, we, we don't go for 240 shows nonstop. Now it's, you do 20, you take a couple of weeks off. You do 20, you take a month off. You know, it's, it's pretty civilized. Um, just because now we all have places to go, instead of hotel rooms, we all have families, we all have things to do, you know, we're, we're, we have other lives that are running parallel. Let's, uh, let's hear a song from the new record. Yeah. 